Dribbling this year is a lot harder than it's ever been in any other 2K ever. But you guys watching this don't have anything to worry about because in this video, I'm going to show you guys exactly what you need in order to become a dribble god in NBA 2K23. For this video and really all videos this year, it does not matter whether you are on current gen or next gen. Both of the gens are almost the exact same and gameplay for one is literally the exact same. The only differences are literally visual what the park looks like. Along with showing you guys the best dribble moves, I'm also going to give you guys badges, set settings and a dribble tutorial in this video with hand cam so you guys know exactly what you're doing with all that being said however make sure to watch this video all the way through and let's hop straight into it what is good youtube it is your boy arson and today i'm going to be showing you guys how to dribble on nba 2k23 dribbling is a lot a lot different than it usually is and it feels so weird in the beginning once you're able to get used to dribbling it definitely feels much better but it does take a lot to get used to that dribbling however watching this video is one step closer to becoming a lot better at dribbling again make sure you guys watch this video all the way through because you do not want to miss anything i say in this video along with all these clips you guys are seeing right now now, my record is also 63 and 1. So I know what I'm talking about on 2K and when it comes to dribbling. And that's why you should actually listen to me. One of the huge changes this year from last year is adrenaline boost. And if you have been living under a rock, you don't know anything about adrenaline boost. Basically, you can only speed boost three times in a possession. You can dribble, you can chain as many dribble moves as you want, but as soon as you sprint out of any dribble move, it takes away one adrenaline boost. And if you use all three, then you basically can't dribble anymore. You could still dribble, but you're going to be really, really slow and you're not going to really be able to dribble. So that is another thing I will go over later on in the dribble tutorial. I will talk about conserving your adrenaline boost so you can dribble for a lot longer. But before we hop into it, let's see if we can get this video to 2000 likes. I don't know if y'all are like that, but if you are, you know what I'm saying? Let me, let me know, get this video to 2000 likes. And also if you are new around here, make sure that sub button and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. But all that being so let's hop straight into it. Okay, so one of the first things you are going to want to do is you're going to want to go over to options and quit over here, and you're going to want to go into controller settings. Now, there's some very, very important things that you're going to need to change here. One of the first ones being vibration. If you like the feel of vibration, I personally like to have vibration on when I'm dribbling. Just gives me feedback for how I'm dribbling, what I'm doing. But honestly, it's all just preference. If you like vibration on, keep it on. If you don't like it, you can turn it off. Now, shot meter doesn't really apply to dribbling, but I would recommend that you turn it off. And the two really, really important things right here are the pro stick function and pro stick orientation. Now, I have mine set to default. I like to use default because I can dunk with the right stick and do other things with the right stick. But if you are a beginner, I would recommend having this on dribble moves only. It's not going to let you do anything stupid with your right stick. And it's going to allow you to learn your dribble moves a little bit easier. So if you are a beginner, I would highly recommend putting this on dribble move. Now for orientation, there's absolute and camera relative. Camera relative is so hard to dribble on. And I would highly recommend having this on absolute. It's on absolute by default, but do not change this to camera relative. Now moving into the next important thing, you are going to want to have certain playmaking badges on and they're going to help you out so, so much when you are dribbling. The first one is going to be quick first step and you're going to want to have this badge on the maximum you possibly can. What this badge does, it basically makes your speed boost animations and your dribbling a lot, a lot quicker. And so you're definitely going to want to have it on the highest level possible. The next badge you're going to need is killer combos. Last year, this badge was basically called quick chain and this year it's called killer combos it is really really important this is one of the most important badges you're gonna want to have at the highest level possible what it does is it allows you to dribble a lot in a row and basically chain a bunch of dribble moves together and if you don't have this badge on you dribble so much slower now with all this dribbling you're gonna be doing you're definitely gonna need some handles for days you're gonna run out of stamina very very quickly this year and that was one of the huge focuses 2k had on completely nerfing stamina so you have to be very very efficient with your dribbling this year to not get ripped i would definitely recommend having on at least bronze unpluckable if not higher it basically just allows you to not get ripped when you're dribbling i would be running at least bronze bail as well that way you can pass out of shots and the ball is not going to go over your teammate's head clamp breaker is also a very very important badge it helps you fight off contact and overall just break down your opponents and drive by them i can only put this badge on bronze because i don't have enough playmaking badges but if you can put this badge on gold and finally with my last remaining playmaking badge i'm putting it on floor general now if you have more than this up clamp breaker put on some ankle breaker even mismatch expert if you're like a small guard vice grips can be really really important if you're struggling with getting ripped after you get a rebound but these are definitely the most important badges to have on and the ones that i run the next important thing you are going to want to do is come over to the gatorade training facility and you're going to want to do all your drills i recommend doing the treadmills right here 
these little hurdles right here, the dumbbells on this wall right here, this leg press machine, and finally the battle ropes for the last one. Those are the five that I do, and honestly, I think they are the easiest. Basically, the goal of doing that is to get three stars in each of these categories. Now, I wasn't paying attention when I did mine, and I messed up my stamina, but the goal is to get three stars in all of these, and what that's going to do is it's going to give you an extra bar of stamina, which is really important when you're not trying to run out of stamina. So I would highly recommend doing your Gatorade workout. Going into my dribble animations that I do have on, you're gonna wanna have these on in order to follow along in the dribble tutorial. If you guys have better ones or these ones you don't like, you can substitute them, but just know when we get to the dribble tutorial, it may be a little bit off. It's not the end of the world, but these are the best dribble moves I have found anyway. So these are the ones you should have on. So starting off with dribble style, I like to have Michael Jordan. I've tested a few more than this, these three, but by far and above the best one that at least I can get on my build is Michael Jordan. It's very, very quick both ways. And that's what I really, really like about it. Moving on to signature size up. I've tried out a decent amount of them. Most of the ones that I can get are very, very slow. And if you have a higher ball handle than me, there's probably some more you can get. But for me, the best one I have found is Tracy McGrady. It's just very, very quick. And all the animations are very, very solid in it. It doesn't really have any slow animations. And it's very, very good for when you're dribbling. Going into size of escape, this is one of the most important things to have on and to do it correctly. For me, the best one that I found is Paul George. I really, really like the size of escape crossover in it. The rest of the moves are kind of iffy but I really, really like the size of escape crossover in it. All of these NBA player ones are really, really good, to be honest. Kobe is decent. Luka is pretty, pretty good. LeBron is good. And John Wall is good as well. But for the purposes of this dribble soil, I'm keeping Paul George on just because it is so, so good. For moving crossover, I have on pro. There might be a better one, honestly, but I like this one for the spin back. It allows me to do the spin back, which I'll show you guys how to do later in this video. For moving behind the backs, the best one that I have found is Zach Levine. If you are a guard under 6'5 and a 90 plus ball handle, you can get Steph Curry, but anyone else, the best one is Zach Levine by far. It's just fast and all the other ones are really, really slow and clunky. But Zach Levine is smooth and it also is very, very fast. For moving spins, I have on basic. Now there's a lot of moving spins, but I like basic because it allows me to do that spin back like I mentioned before, and which I'll show you guys later in this video. For moving hesitations, I have on Luca. It's going to give you a few very, very important moves as well as that super, super glitchy hesitation that you may have seen in the intro of this video. But overall, it's just the best moving hesitation. And finally, going into moving step backs right here, you're gonna wanna have on Luca. Let's do the move called the Asa slide, which is very, very good at creating space, especially when you're moving up on the threes court. It's okay as well on the twos, but very, very good on the threes court. And moving step back, Luca is the best one. But now it is the time you guys have been waiting for. It is time to go into the my court right here and to show you guys how to do all of these dribble moves. Before we hop on the court, one of the best ways in order to practice dribble moves is to go to your squad up and there's a list of NBA players that you can invite. I usually try to invite one that's like bad at defense or someone like, I don't even know. Like I don't even know who Damian Lee is. I'm sorry, bro, but I just invite him. But then once he's in the my court, I can go scroll down and do a personal workout put myself on offense and him on defense and it gives a full court setting and you can even practice with no adrenaline boost in this if you want to practice with adrenaline boost it might be helpful to just do a normal shoot around because those adrenaline boosts can be hard to get down but overall if you guys just want like a full court thing to practice your dribble moves this is the game mode to play and a little bit later i'll talk about speed boosting and adrenaline boost but for now i'm just going to show you guys the dribble moves in this mode because it's a lot easier to do it without the adrenaline boost. Starting off with the first move is going to be the momentum crossover. It's one of the most simple moves to do in the entire game. It is not too good on its own, but it's going to be very, very good to, to combo in with other moves that I show you guys. So this is what it looks like right here. And to go back the other way, just like that. Again, it's a very, very simple move and it's not too good on its own. I wouldn't recommend like trying to like score just using this move but it's very, very good to combo in with other moves. To do the momentum crossover, all you do is flick up on your right stick and left or right on your left stick. Now it's gonna go to the opposite ball hand. So for this, if the ball's in my left hand, I'm flicking up on the right stick and right on the left stick. So just like that, I get the momentum crossover. Very, very simple and back the other way. This time I would flick my left stick to the left and my right stick up. After you get the momentum crossover down, the next move I have for you guys is going to be the Paul George size of escape or really any size of escape for that matter. And and specifically we're going to be going over the size of crossover now I'll get into the behind the back a little bit later but for paul george the move is going to look like this it is very very fast very very quick 
and it is very very good this is a move i really really like to chain all my moves out of it's a super super good move to use as like the basis of your dribbling it doesn't really get affected if the defender is guarding you tightly or not. I can still do it even if the defender is like all up on me. I can still do it. And especially pairing this with a momentum crossover just like that, you can see it works out very, very well. To do this move, all you have to do is hold down RT. And if the ball is in your right hand, you're flicking your left stick up and to the left. If it's in the left hand, you're doing up and to the right. So just like that, up and to the left, up and to the right. It is so simple to do. It is one of the easiest moves to do, and it's super, super fast and glitchy. Now, before we get into actually comboing up and doing a lot of advanced stuff, you guys need to know the basics so you can use it in your dribbling. Any crossover moves are going to be diagonal up. So if the ball's in the right hand, it's going to be diagonal up to the left. So not holding RT, that's just a normal crossover. It would be diagonal up to the right back, just like that. Those are super important to have just when you're comboing up and when you're standstill dribbling and doing a lot of dribble moves in a row you need to throw some normal crossovers between the legs and behind the backs in there. To do that between the legs, all you do is, again, don't hold RD. All you do is flick your right stick to the left if the ball's in your right hand, just like that. And again, the opposite way if you're going back to the right hand. For the last set of moves, the behind the backs, just the normal standing ones, it's going to be diagonal down to the left if the ball's in your right hand, just like that. And it's going to be diagonal down to the right if the ball is in your left hand but you can see they're very simple and if you just want to combo like this you know what i'm saying you can it's not the most efficient there's definitely better ways to do it but to throw those moves in there when you are doing a bunch of other moves are very very key it's very very good to reduce your stamina consumption okay the next move i want to talk about is one that i have a habit of doing and the paul george one is not the best but there are some really really good ones and i still even use the paul george one it is going to be the size up escape behind the back so you're holding rt and it's going to be diagonal down to the right if the ball's in my left hand and the opposite if the ball's in my right hand so just like that we do that move it's very very slow but for some reason it works and i like it and at the point i would use this i would probably use it in some sort of combo and then do this step back after because it is very very glitchy like that i like to do this move and then do a step back right after and that's actually a great segue into the next move because it's going to be this hop back or pull back i don't really know what to call it it's just like a little hop back this move is really really simple all you do is hold rt and flick your right stick down this move is amazing for creating space and especially if you end up dribbling like right here you can flick this back and you get like right on the three-point line it is a very very good move and i would definitely recommend having it in your arsenal the next move i have for you guys is the pullback now you guys probably see me do this a lot after my momentum just like that it's a little pullback animation and is a very very good move if you get it down and you guys can see the combos with momentum and doing this pullback are literally infinite you can do it as long as you want there is two different ways to do this pullback now if you do it without a momentum crossover before it you have to hold rt and you flick up on your right stick and down on your left stick and you do just like this it's a little bit slower this way and i don't actually like it as much that's why i said the momentum crossover is going to be so useful later on and it's the first move i showed you guys because you do the momentum and then you do the pullback it's the same thing up on the right stick down on the left stick at the same time but now you're not holding rt because you're doing the momentum before it if you try to do it without holding rt it just like does that it doesn't work like it just doesn't work if you try to do it without holding rt however it's really really good to do with the momentum and you know what i'm saying you can combo into it and it's just it's just it's it's really really good the next move i have for you guys is going to be a moving behind the back it's really really simple to do this move and it's going to be good when you're playing threes all you have to do is diagonal down to the right while you're moving straight ahead but you got to make sure your defender is not all up close to you if your defender bumps you they're going to take you out of it the moving behind the back is not the absolute best move this year but it is very very good if you, you know what i'm saying are playing like threes and your defender's not expecting it it's going to be a good move to have and know how to do another really really good move is going to be a move called the asta slide now all you do for this move is as you're running up the court you're going to flick down on the right stick just like that and it's going to do like this little pause like hezzy and it's going to stop you in place obviously on an ai defender the ai is pretty good at guarding it but most people won't expect it and then you can do other stuff out of it especially i like the pullback i like to get really downhill when i use this move almost to the free throw line and then after i do this move you know what i'm saying i just do a little step back like that and i'll end up being at the three-point line for a wide open shot and no online player is really going to expect that move it's very very solid on twos and threes the next move i have for you guys is the explosive behind the back now to do this move all you're going to do is is hold rt flick down your right stick diagonal down to the right and your left stick to the right now that's only if the ball is in the left hand it's going to be the opposite if the ball is in the right hand but it looks just like this 
The one thing I also noticed about this move is you have to do it while you're moving. You can't really do it while you're standing still. The next move I have for you guys is the behind the back misdirection. This was a really, really popular move last year, and it's the same exact control. You guys can see this is what it looks like right here. It's very, very slow on my player, but on certain guards and certain other players, it's going to be very, very good. To do this move, you hold RT down. If the ball's in my right hand, I'm gonna flick my right stick diagonal down to the left, and I'm gonna hold my left stick for a second back to the right. And it's gonna look like this. At the same exact time you're gonna do that, it's gonna look like this. It's not the best with Paul George size of a skate package on, but there's definitely other moves that make it a lot, a lot better. Now that we've really gone over a lot of the basic moves, I want to talk about speed boosting. So you guys see this is one of the speed boost animations and the other one just looks like this. Those are the two speed boost animations I get. Now I can do any single move I want. I can spam as many of these as I want, as long as I'm not dribbling out of it this will not use an adrenaline boost. And so you don't want to be using a lot of adrenaline boost. You only have three per possession. And so you need to be dribbling and doing a lot of standstill stuff so you don't lose your adrenaline boost. But like I was saying, as soon as you combo up and then do a dribble out of it, like that right there, as soon as you combo up and do a dribble out of it, you're using an adrenaline boost. You only have three per possession. And if you use them, then you literally can add dribble for the rest of that possession. It is extremely, extremely important to conserve them. And it's very, very simple. Literally just don't speed boost out of your dribble moves until you want to score. I can dribble as long as I want and do as many combos as I want before I actually dribble out of it. You know what I'm saying? At that point, I can get to the basket, shoot a three pointer, and I barely use any adrenaline boost because you really don't have to use them this year in order to be a good dribbler. Now, before we end off this video, there is two more super, super overpowered moves that you guys can do, and they kind of work in sync together. Now, the first one is gonna be this Luka Doncic glitched hesitation. And all you do for this is I'm gonna run to the left here while holding RT, and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna flip my right stick diagonal down to the left. And it's gonna look like this. It's just so overpowered. And obviously the AI defender is definitely better at guarding it, but online, it literally works every single time. But online, it literally works every single time. And it's it's super, super overpowered. The only thing about this move is it does use an adrenaline boost, which is kind of bad, but really you're only gonna be doing this move one time and then you're gonna have a wide open basket. It is just that good and it literally just, even the AI can get past the AI with it. And finally, with this last move, I wanted to go into the normal shoot around so I could show you guys with my adrenaline boost. And also the AI is gonna be able to guard it just because the AI has really, really good defense. But basically that Luka Doncic Hezzy, you can do it again right here. You guys can see how good it is right here again, but you can do that move into the spin back, which I'll show you right here. All you have to do is do this move and then do a spin back right here. And just like that, boom. And you could even go back to the three point line if you get really, really good at it, it is such a good move to do because as soon as you do that Luka Doncic Hezzy, people are going to think, oh, he's driving to the basket. And then you just spin back and you get a wide open three pointer to do the spin back. It's going to be a moving between the legs. Then it's going to be a half spin back. And then it finally is tapping LT to do a hesitation at the end to do the moving between the legs. It's just holding RT and going right or left, depending on what side is going to the opposite ball hand. And to do the spin back, all you do is from the top of your right stick, hold your right stick out to the top. And once you have that, do a half spin down to the bottom. Now, if the ball is in your left hand, you're going to do a half spin the left side. And if the ball is in your right hand, you're going to do a half spin the right side. And finally, you're going to end it off by tapping LT. And when you put it all together, it looks like this. And all together, you know what I'm saying? It looks all nice, clean, and put together. And now that you guys have learned how to do a lot of different dribble moves, you can know how to combo them up. You know what I'm saying? Spend some time in the my court to learn how to combo all of these moves together. And you'll be dribbling just like me. I may not be like the absolute best dribbler on NBA 2K23, but I definitely know what I'm doing a little bit. And I and my record definitely shows that being 63 and one. But that's gonna be about it for this video. Hope you guys enjoy it. But with all that being said, I'm out, man. Peace.